Hello, everyone. This is Mike Ronchetti, and I'm excited to have a fellow business owner from the Indiana area of Michiana, Brian Keeve. Our guest is a very special person, and I'd like to welcome Brian. Hello, Brian. Hi, Mike. Thanks for taking the time to chat today. I appreciate you having me on board. Well, no, thank you very much for coming on board and, and telling us a bit about yourself. Let's start with the beginning. Can you introduce yourself? Let us know a little bit about your personal story, uh, such as where you're born, where you live, about your family, some hobbies. Give us some background, even some funny stories if there's anything about your past or your family or whatever. So, Sure. So, um, as Mike mentioned, um, grew up here in Michiana, northern Indiana. I um, was actually born on the East Coast, but moved here when I was under one. So this has always been home. Um, family still lives here. My parents live in the house I grew up in and, um, grew up, went through the, um, local Penn public school system. And then after that went to Notre Dame through the school of architecture, um, had the pleasure of being there for five years as it's a five-year program and, um, was blessed to have the chance to live overseas in Rome, Italy for a year, um, as a part of that program where their entire third year. Um, and all along throughout that, um, I was with my, my now wife, um, Stephanie, we started, uh, seeing each other in high school, um, saw each other throughout college and, um, were fortunate to tie the knot on campus at Notre Dame, not too long after we graduated. And we have, um, three wonderful little kids and a fourth on the way. So cool. it's, it's, uh, we're an exciting time of life, especially as business is continuing to ramp up and. Um, our oldest is eight and then our daughter is six and we got our little guys four years old and um, number four will, will, will come into our world here in the next uh, 30 to 60 days probably. So but yeah, after after school, um, my, my, my wife and I both moved to Chicago. Um, we spent uh, about five years there practicing professionally. She's a graphic designer. Um, who now works for the University of Notre Dame. And uh, I started Traditions Custom Builders a um, little over three years ago. Um, but we came back in 2015 and started building homes shortly thereafter and um, you know, decided to make the transition to start my own business um, a few years ago. And here we are today. Ooh, fantastic. Do you have any funny stories along the way you want to share? <laughs> uh stories i mean we're learning every day we're learning something new with our kiddos um the, the the old adage of you know they grow up fast so you know count your blessings we are learning that every single day as i look past my computer here at a picture you know a christmas picture we have of our family it's it's it's, it's hard to kind of fathom how quickly they are growing up you know i remember the day each of them were born and um, very active kids, very energetic kids. Um, we just did some work in our backyard this past year. So we spent a lot of time outside as a family out on the playground and the pool. Um, our uh -huh. oldest is our athlete. He plays just about anything with a ball, um, or a stick or a puck or a, you name it. Um, <laughs> our daughters are gymnast and dancer and our little guy, he's, I'll get the chance to coach his uh, four-year-old soccer team this fall. So I'll be coaching him and, uh, his eight-year-old brother this this fall is um, as we're focusing on our, our 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 little one that we're bringing into the world here in October. Uh, awesome that you've been able to find a career as well as a love that you can life balance your home and your family life without any seams. It sounds like so. Congratulations! No, try, 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 and <laughs> I don't know about seams. We got lots of seams, but you oh, know, yeah. time time is uh, time is always of the essence with all of it. And as we all know, there's only so much time, but we're certainly trying to make the best of, of, of every moment we have. Well, 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 great. Well, let's migrate over to talking a bit about your business. So at this point in time, tell us a little bit about how you came about getting going in the business. And at what point did you have the confidence to, that you could actually run your own business? Sure. Um, I would say, you know, building, building homes. Uh, I was working under a developer and you're kind of running – you're kind of running your own business if, if, if you're able to manage that process. I mean, you're dealing with finances, you're dealing with, you know, the mathematics involved in construction, you're dealing with human relations, you're dealing with psychology, you're dealing with design, you're, you know, you're dealing with lots of facets. Um, and it really makes you pretty multi-talented and 
your role is, is, is multifaceted where you're not only always learning, um, but you have your hand in lots of different trades, lots of different um, industries, lots of um, different ideologies. You know, you're, you're just, you're a marriage counselor to clients. You're, you know, you have to have an understanding of all the construction elements as you're working through the process. And from our standpoint, um, an element that's really, really important to me in the foundations of who we are as traditions is, is, is a, a strong sense of design. Uh, that is not a typical approach, I think, of most home builders, at least in our area. Um, design almost seems like a secondary item. Um, but since day one, we've, we've almost every day of you know, company's existence, we've had interior designers involved pretty heavily um, in our day to day and the way we do things. And that's usually a secondary thought on, on most homes. So that is one thing we're trying to do to, to separate ourselves. But, you know, in, to kind of reel back into your question, you know, in starting the business, it it's just something where, you know, felt like I could on my own deliver a product to the area that doesn't exist here right now. You know, there's, there's just the, the the structure of a lot of other builders and this isn't anything against the other builders in the area. Um, it's just, you know, I wanted to be focused on fewer larger homes. Um, you always kind of hear oh, more is better, more is better. You build more homes, you know, that makes you the best. I, I that's not what I want. I, I, I want to have my hand and my team's hand in every single home that we build. You know, I, I don't want to really build more than eight to 10 homes a year. Um, but we want to build the very best eight to 10, 10 homes we possibly can. Um, that's very important to us. You know, we want to have our hands on, uh, we want to have, you know, weekly and daily site visits and we, we want to leave our fingerprint on kind of the DNA of every home. Um, it's still our client's home. Uh, it's still their vision. It's still their design. Um, but we want to make sure that we're intimately involved in the process and it's not just us sitting behind a desk managing it and kind of pointing our fingers go here they'll go there it's 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 very involved i mean this morning i was on site for you know over three hours doing a, a an electrical walkthrough with um, some of our clients um, over in granger making sure switches and outlets were just right and fixtures were where they needed to be um, in lieu of putting our full faith in you know electricians doing that not saying that they're not capable but we want to make sure our clients are feeling like they're guided throughout the process and it's not just a point a to point b and there's a bunch of ambiguity in the middle like we want to hit every step along the way wow so it sounds like you've adapted a style from um, was this early on a kind of a, a i own it type of thing until i hand it off to the new owner i mean you kind of sound like you personalize it very much the detail and excellence and the quality control style is that mm -hmm. is that from day one was that your thought or is it kind of a more yeah i mean it's even when i was you know doing a similar process where i was before for my own company i it was I still wanted to be design focused in what I was doing, you know, so it wasn't the, you know, you often hear like builders have design centers or selection centers where you sit down in a room the size of your office and you pick out everything in the house, you know, and it's, it's um, a little bit of an underwhelming way to do it where you say, okay, well on this wall is, are the only stones you can pick on this wall are the only sidings you can pick and here's, you know, yeah, you can do other stuff, but you know, that takes way more time and costs way more money, but we want to align ourselves with, with clients who they want to try things. They want, you know, we want them to trust us um, throughout the process because we are going to, you know, we feel like they are hiring us for a reason and we want them to trust our input. We want them to trust our feedback on things, both design and construction wise we say, hey, what about this? It may push someone out of their comfort zone a little bit, but this will make it your home. And this isn't something you're going to see on the 15 homes not running down the street. And it's not copy and paste. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's that's something where we really try on a house by house basis to pull together details that really personalize it for our clients where they feel like this is my home. Um, and, you know, sure, there may be other homes from a plan or, you know, you'll pick out that light or this plumbing fixture or that, and, you know, you're not the only people in the world to have that, but we, we don't want it to be one of those things where you drive by and you say, Oh, that's a traditions house. And that's a traditions house. And that's a traditions house where you have a very 
specific identity. I mean, we've done uh, more of a mid-century type home up by Lake Michigan. Um, we have more of a, we call it like a low country, like Southern type home up in Niles. We have a very traditional all brick home right on the river downtown um, to craftsman homes near Notre Dame. And, and we really want to cater our design aesthetic towards what our clients love. So that's, that's really important to us. So, so again, you, you're very much a driven person, especially at your young age and experience level of doing this for a couple, less than a decade or about a decade. But it sounds like you've got a strong commitment to deliver what the customer wants in a way that they don't even imagine. And so you're kind of pulling it out of them and what, what, what soul they want in their home, it sounds like. Is that kind of a fair assessment? We hope so. <laughs> We hope so. You know, one of the hardest parts of our job, whether it's clients, sub suppliers, is aligning on expectations, you know, because because at the end of the day, everybody always wants it faster and cheaper, you know, so it's it's that's the hardest thing for us. You know, we'd lo I'd love to be able to sit down with someone on the first day um, and say, hey, we're going to have your house done on August 15th. Um, mm -hmm. And even if we're a month out to completion, I, you'd love to say, hey, we're going to be done in a month. Um, cause I'm, you know, I am an eternal optimist. I'd love, you know, you'd, you'd love to think you can do more for less and get things done faster, but sometimes you do have to take a step back and really try and align on those timelines and budgets. And, and, and at the end of the day, you know, you're never going to make everybody happy. Um, but we, we do everything, you know, we really do love what we do and we try our hardest to, you know, over communicate where we can. And, you know, even through our pricing proposals and the way we set things up, we don't, I think the last pricing proposal I put in front of someone last week was 22 pages long. You know, it's not, it's not a number on a sheet of paper slid across the table and it's a take it or leave it. It's a, Hey, there's a line item for um, the dumpsters. There's a line item for floor protection. There's a line item for the temporary locks that go on the garages. There's a line item for uh, we have a cost code for uh, a, a dog bowl water filler. <laughs> um, you know, so we really, again, you're, you're never going to get everything perfect. Um, you know, we are only human, but we do everything that we can to be as transparent about that part of the process, especially on the front end. Um, but, you know, we, we, we as a team, we're, we're evolving, we're changing, we're figuring out what, what works best, where pinch points are and, you know, we are trying to get better on a, you know, a day by day basis, you know, because the last thing that we are perfect, but um, we certainly do love what we do. And I'm very fortunate to have a team of people uh, along in this journey with me that care just as much as I do. And it's that that part is really important to us. Excellent. Excellent. I'm going to switch a little bit our direction from looking at yourself in the present to maybe in the past a little bit. Can you share mm -hmm. a story or two with someone who has pushed you or inspired you that you could do it and, and the impact they had? Think back maybe one or two people that might might stand out. Yeah, I mean, um, I guess, you know, one of, one of the, you know, the biggest people in, involved in kind of the consummation of this uh this business I, I i do have a business partner that helped me get started um he's he's someone that's very successful in the urban redevelopment and multifamily space um in the midwest um was formerly a client um who had you know such an exceptional experience um he said we'd love to go in partnership with you to start your own company um, someone who has always been there for me every step of the way, you know, uh, as, as a, as, as a friend, um, as an advisor, as a confidant, um, as a coach, um, it, it's, it's certainly, you know, been someone who to me gives so much of himself to, I don't say little old traditions, but, um, you know, I see he certainly has a way bigger fish to fry than, um, who we are as a company, but he, he, when you he's someone when you talk to him he cares immensely about every word that comes out of your mouth and he shows so much empathy um and and so much understanding um he's, he's such an, an incredible problem solver um and um very solutions oriented guy like how do we, all right, how do we how do we improve on this how do we get better how do we get answers and um you know that that's one of the kind of the biggest sources, um, you know, and, 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 and truthfully second and, you know, 
not 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 underneath him is 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 my family um you know i couldn't have started this without um the support of them my wife took uh you know we started this at a great time you know at the beginning of 2021 right in the mess of everything um but um you know during that day I mean, we had our third child in 2020 um my wife continued to work some throughout that the year of, of true insanity um but as we were making shifts into 2021 to start traditions my wife stepped away from work um she was at home with our with our with our youngest who we were kind of sheltering as much as we could and our, our two older ultimately got pulled out of school too like like many people you know school shutting down and you know they were all you know four years younger than they are now um so there was a huge burden placed on her um not only with a newborn and dealing with the pandemic but you know toss two more kids back in home that we thought were going to be in school or in in preschool or daycare um so my wife really shouldered a ton of the ton of the, the the home needs that took that burden off of my shoulders so those were two real big influences to help make this happen well you, you kind of um helped me by jumping into one of my questions about uh fact that you don't do a business success in isolation and you were a perfect example of that how you got a, a crew of people who trust you as well as you're trusting them uh can you kind of remember back though you might, might cite something you've already said one of the biggest challenges that you've had in the last four or five years and then how you know as an owner you had to make some decisions that taught you to learn something about yourself or whatever could you just kind mm-hmm. of try to reflect back on a couple of things those things sure uh I, one of the hardest things in my mind is you know managing time and managing people um you know there's only so much time um you know i'm i'm, I'm you know i would certainly class myself as a, as a hard worker where You've got the late nights, the early mornings, you know, the weekends that you'd love to get out of having that, you know, frequency of work. You know, you certainly don't want to step away from your business and, you know, trust it to your team. But, you know, I, 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 that is one of the hardest things right now is balancing the, the time side of things in the past, in the present. And I certainly see it in the future because, I, you know, my mindset is always, well, you know, I can do that. Well, I can do that. You know, I can do this. I can do that. And instead of, you know, delegate, it's, it's hard to delegate stuff because, you know, because when I started building homes, um, I was a one man show. Um, I designed the homes. I did the interior design. I did the project management. I did the scheduling. Um, I did the invoice processing. I did client communications. I did, you know, pulled in lien waivers and made draw requests with banks and, I mean, I did everything, uh, even, you know, there was often, a, a, far too often a broom in my hands too. You go early on a job site or you go on a weekend and, um, you really want things to be dialed in to your client's expectations. And, um, that's how I operated. So if there was anything that was missing or late or wrong, I only had myself to blame. Um, so that has been one of the hardest things from a people management standpoint as, as traditions have started and grown, um, is, is, is trying to surround yourself with not only the right people, but the people that you can trust to, to, to do their roles and do them exceptionally. Cause like I said, in the past, it was always, I only had myself to blame, you know, and because if something wasn't getting done, it was, it was because it was on me. And now I do have to lean on and trust my team um, because, you know, they're all people that as a company, we want them to kind of represent the same values that we want to represent, Mm -hmm. but, you know, also managing all those people. It's like, you know, that's why I found internally and externally managing people is one of the hardest things. Um, Internally, they obviously got to, you know, be the leader of the pack. Um, And externally we have, we have clients you need to manage. We have subcontractors that need to be managed. We have suppliers that need to be managed. And then there's this, there's a whole concert of scheduling and um, just the overall dynamics of pulling all those pieces together. When you build a home, it's, um, it's pretty immense. Um, so, the, you know, those I think are the two biggest, you know, the time management side of things, figuring out, trying to figure out some type of balance and then the management of people, especially as you grow too, because, I don't ever want to become too big where, like I said earlier, we're not touching every aspect of every home we build the same way. Um, 
but you know, and I don't ever want to become too big to the point where we're we're not being able to deliver on the level of quality that we hold ourselves to. Hmm. So, kind of taking what you just said now and projecting in the future. Imagine the next one to three years. What do you think is your number one point of growth or challenge to achieve those goals that you already have for yourself? Um, I think finding the last few pieces of the puzzle. Um, we have, um, we've had, you know, some, some shifts in, in, in our people in the last 12 months, you know, some in, some out. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that, you know, finding, because we, we are, we're a small company. Um, uh, we're never going to be, I, I certainly don't see us ever bigger than 10, you know, but we're kind of in that six, seven range, um, uh, of, of employees and, um, Everybody is almost, as I've said to our team multiple times, everyone is almost their own department. You know, everyone's almost their own executive. You know, you have an executive of architecture, you have an executive of project management, you have an executive of field work, you have an executive of financials and bookkeeping. So it's not like there's um, the amount of, we'll say, fringe players that you may see in like a big corporation where it's like, Oh, that person's filling that hole. And that person's filling that hole. Um, everybody's got to be an A player on our team. So I think that's in the next few years. I mean, we're hoping we're filling some of those holes in the coming weeks. Um, um, if not, you know, if not months, but that's, that's the biggest thing is in, in retaining everybody, you know, retaining people, making them feel, you know, hopefully they feel you know valued and feel, um, that they are a part of a team. You know, we are in the process right now. It's taking a little longer than hoped, but um, we're in the process of renovating an office for ourselves. So we've, we've utilized shared office space since day one. Mm. Um, and um, finding the right home, it's, it's a home over a little closer to Notre Dame, um, but we've got it down to studs right now and we're trying to turn it into our own space. So that's going to be a huge component of it because I know that's been a pinch point for our team internally um, whereas we're kind of crammed in a, in a shared space, uh, we've got very gracious office mates that have, that have brought us in, but I, you know, I certainly feel like we've overextended our welcome a little bit, uh, <laughs> um, on the space that they've granted us, but we're, 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 we, we could not be more fortunate. You know, we, we, right now we partner up with, um, Howard Hanna real estate agency in town. Um, I am Great the licensed song. real estate agent as well. Um, so ma- mainly to, you know, buy and sell land, if we have it or to list, if we build a spec home, you know, I'm not an active, I'm certainly not an active real estate agent, but um, I needed somewhere to hang my license. And part of the dialogue um, with them as I was starting traditions was, you know, I really would like to have a small space for us to grow. And then when the time was right, we'd, we'd find our own home. And um, it's something we found last year in the renovation is taking a, quite a bit longer than anticipated because we've had to prioritize our clients' homes, but that's the way it should be. Um, but, you know, that growth is is going to be a challenge in the coming years because we want to make sure we do it the right way. Well, well it, it sounds like you've gotten a, a, a vision of where you want to be in three to five years. It, it sounds like you've got a plan as well as a, a purpose in life, which is incredible. You know, we we have a, a legend in our industry, business coach Jim Rome, and he's he's oftentimes said, "You become the average of the five people you spend the most time with." As you think about this, what advice do you have for business owners who are trying to do it all on their own? <sighs> Find people you can trust. Um, I'm 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 very fortunate, you know. I have some of those people in my inner circle um, where you you know that you know implicitly you can count on these folks and that they're always going to do right by you and the company um, and they're they're you know and then that's what we, we want to make sure we're doing you know we're doing the right things you know again like I said we're not always going to be perfect we're not always going to answer every email in time or return every call in a timely manner or do this or that but one thing I can always assure our clients from a process standpoint is we hold the standards of the homes we build to a certain level and we will not let our clients compromise on certain things. Um, and, and, and surrounding yourself with people that 
align in those similar values, I think is a huge element in that. And I think that's a really neat um, sentiment about becoming the average of the people that you spent, you know, year round. But that's, it's, it's certainly important because, you know, knowing who people's inner circle are um, can tell you a lot about somebody. So that's, that's an interesting, interesting comment for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you, you've been blessed with some incredible people around you who have helped you on this journey. What would you like to say to them at this time? Uh, an overwhelming and, and from the bottom of my heart, thank you. And, you know, deep gratitude for, you know, every anybody's commitment to our, our journey, you know, and to our vision and, and to what we're building and creating. Because I, I still feel like we're, you know, we're still building this company. Um uh, it won't always be that way, but we will always be learning. Um, we will always be growing, and that's one wonderful thing about our industry. It's not it's not a binary thing. You know, there's no on or off. There's no right or left. There's no black or white. Um, there's a lot of gray area, and there's a lot of things that not only from a construction side, but from a design side, where you need to be a problem solver. You need to think critically. You need to think. Um, on your feet and having the people in my circle that are here to support that process is, is something I'm deeply grateful for, you know, both at home and, and on the work side of things, you know, we're grateful not only for mm -hmm. in our internal team, but all, all of our subs, all of our suppliers, you know, where we, 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 we're in a world now in our industry where, um, you know, the builders need the subs and suppliers more than the other way around. It used to be, it used to be the subs and suppliers were, you know, dependent upon the builders. Um, subs, good subs are few and far between, you know, and we try and really establish um, quality relate. It's, it's not a transaction. Um, it, it's a relationship with our subs, you know, and they're all there not just our internal team doing what's right by us, but you know, we couldn't build the homes that we build without our subs. Um, couldn't build the homes that we build without our suppliers, certainly couldn't do without our clients, but having those strong relationships and the people we, f we feel like we can lean on um, is, is, um, is, is immensely important for us to have strong relationships there. Fantastic, thank you. So for everyone listening on our Business Spotlight, please check out Brian's company on the link in the description in the comments that we have below here. And also feel free to leave a comment on his LinkedIn page, what you thought of his thoughts as well as share his congratulatory mindset of, Hey, every client is an opportunity to make some home business home better for them, as well as he creates this, uh, I guess this incredible cooperation with his clients, which is very different. Usually, like you said, it's more transactional and in his case, it's not that way. So it's fantastic. So Brian, it's been a pleasure speaking with you today. So thank you for being on our show. Thanks, Mike. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to chat.